Hi there, welcome to Fluing in Dreams. This is Eyeshadow Palette Week, and today we're doing a roundup of all of the cool tone palettes I've tried in recent months. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video, I'm going to do a roundup of all of the cool tone palettes I have tried in recent months, and let me tell you, there is a lot because a lot of cool tone palettes came out in especially the fall time and it took me some time to get through all of them which is why we're doing this video right now um, because I fell behind I definitely definitely did I I used to do these videos whenever I had tried eight eyeshadow palettes that were cool toned there are more than eight palettes here today so let me just get to it before we get into the video it may be good to know who i am and what i like doing on this channel so hi my name is micah i live in the netherlands i have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how i feel about makeup i have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade i love trying out eyeshadow palettes ss and catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, I hope you like to stick around. Yeah, as I mentioned in the intro, we have many more than just eight palettes here. So I've made a division of drugstore palettes, more affordable things, and more high-end things. And you know what? I've tried more affordable drugstore-y things than I have high-end things. So I think we're gonna get started with the drugstore stuff first. I'm just gonna do like really quick roundup reviews for these. Um, and I do plan on doing a full ranking of all of my cool tone palettes in the summertime. Every year in August, I do eyeshadow palette month compared to eyeshadow palette week that we're doing right now. So uh, therefore come back in the summertime and then I will be ranking all of the cool tone palettes I have in my collection. And then you can get a lowdown of what I love most and etc etc these are just recent things i've tried and as i mentioned i fell behind and i completely forgot to put this video on the schedule i didn't have time to film it so there are like 20 cool tone palettes here right now i have a problem i definitely have a problem <laughs> um but yeah i love cool tones i say it in my intro i have a cool to neutral undertone myself so cool toned eyeshadow I, there's just something about it, especially like something like I'm wearing today, I just feel the best in. I just feel best when I wear a cooler toned eyeshadow. I just do, especially if they're neutral as well. And I just, there were just really good things. There were some really, really good releases this time around. So uh, this is going to be a very raved, ravey, chatty video, I'm sure. So the first thing I wanna show you, these aren't ranked. This is in no particular order is Kaleidos. These are sort of like more mid-range, I feel. So they're sort of bridging the gap between the high-end and the drugstore things, I feel. And they came out with the Alma Viva collection. And both of the quads in the Alma Viva collection, I think are great cool tone palettes. So the more neutrally one is Venus Trap. It's like taupey green, like taupey gray leaning shades with a pink. And then we have this absolutely stunning shimmer. Like for real, like this, this is my jam. This is my jam. If you do something like this, I love it. I love the formula of these Kaleidos quads. I really, really do. Um, I know not everybody does, but I feel that they're really sort of giving us Asian makeup for the Western market. And as you'll see in a minute, I love myself some K-beauty stuff as well. And I feel that Kaleidos is the brand that really sort of bridges that gap between East and West, you could say. The other palette in the uh, collection was Twilight Rush. This isn't necessarily neutral, but it's definitely like cooler toned purples and plums. And even though it, it's, it looks very colorful in the pan, in my brain, it works like a neutral palette. It definitely does. Because on me, this, this doesn't pull like blue. It pulls more gray purple on me. And then you have this stunning purple in the shimmering option. You get this really nice light, almost like lavender sort of purpley palette of shade in the palette that I love. And then this black has a lot of shimmer as well. So love that. It looks a lot more colorful than it actually is, but I love the quality of these Kaleidos quads. I'm glad I have all six of them. And these were just a great addition. And these bridge the gap really nicely between like the first collection we got, the cold blue, blue brew and the 
uh, Black Jasmine, I think they were called, and then the second batch, which were the Glowing Iris and the... Ooh, I never know the second one. I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> but the other two that we had, we had one that was more vibrant and one that was also a bit more neutral. So I feel that they nicely bridge that gap, which is great. Speaking of K-Beauty, because I do feel they're sort of in a league of their own as well um, with what they do. And they, they're sort of, again, that mid-range, you could say. Like, they're not super affordable, but they're a bit like the Kaleidos where a palette is like around 20 euros. Some of them are like around 15, the others are more around like 25, but for me, K-Beauty palettes are like in between like the 15 to 25 euro mark for the most part. Not all of it is. And they can do some really good things and I've tried some lovely things. So one thing I tried because I love the other palettes I tried from the brand so much is this guy. This is Romand. This is the Dusty Fog Garden. And so many of you told me to try this after I loved the Dreamy Lilac Garden and the Peony Nude Garden so much. So this is a really lovely formula. With K-Beauty, you need to bear in mind that you're going to get a wash of color. K-Beauty is all about the wash of color. It's not about boom pigment. We'll get to the boom pigment stuff later if, you, if that's what you're interested in. But yeah, Dusty Fog Garden is just really pretty and you get some different cool toned undertones. Yes, it's got grays, but it also has some browns, it has some plummy things, and then it has some like cooler tone beige shades. It's it's a good one. It is all matte though. I'm not a huge fan of all matte. I'm just not. But if you do like all matte, this is really pretty. And then I had to try this. Lily by Red, their mood keyboard in Ash Mauve. That's what this is called. It looks like a mini keyboard. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? I think that it's really, really cute. It is a bit small to stick your brush in. That's the only, um, the only problem I have here. You get two shimmers that can tie the look together and you just get a bit of a gradient, a cool tone gradient with some pinky tones, but for the most part, it's quite sort of grayish taupe leaning. So pretty. And at the minute, I, I there are so many K-Beauty palettes out there that I haven't tried yet that have like this light, like K-Beauty has really, really discovered cool tones, I feel. So they're doing a lot of like grayish taupe leaning color stories with a pop of pink. And I'm here for it. And this one fits into that vibe for sure. And then something that I'm so glad I've now tried. I was a bit on the fence on this because it does have some like chunkier sparkly glitter things. And it's this from Unleashia. And this is their Glitterpedia in All of Lavender Fog. It's number four from the line. And in here, again, you get that wash of color matte that they love doing, but you get some really intense sparkly things. And yes, they're pressed glitters, but they're pressed glitters that hold their own. And you can easily just apply them with a finger, dab them all over the lid and you're good to go. The only gripe I have with them is if you are a contact lens wearer, it may be difficult to get these off and not get them in your eye um, because these can kind of like stick to your face and then it like it, it's almost impossible to remove. I use um, like very often I'll use like a Bioderma like micellar water to take off my eye makeup. Then I cleanse my face and some of the shimmers from K-Beauty palettes don't even come off my face if I wash in the shower. So it's... It's definitely a thing with these K-Beauty palettes, I'm not gonna lie, but if you like a bit of sparkle, and now that I've tried some actually good pressed glitters from K-Beauty brands, I do appreciate them a lot more. At first I was like, oh, all this pressed glitter, why, why? But it definitely fits the vibe, and I have found that if you make the sparkly eyeshadow the feature of your look, a bit like what I'm wearing today, I, I just feel it really suits my eye shape, so. I do really enjoy that. I remember that I said that there was gonna be a lot of drugstore palettes. These are all the drugstore E-esque priced palettes, as, as in these are more affordable than some of the other things I will be showing you. Um, they are either by true drugstore brands or their drugstore price. Some of these were super affordable and some of these are also some of my favorite palettes that I tried in 2023, so. Let me just get to something that was very successful for me, and that's Dirt Cheap. 
MUA, Little Five Pans. This is them. We have Enchantment and Andromeda Skies. And these are stunning. Enchantment is a bit softer, a bit more whimsical. Um, I did have to go through a learning curve with these that I had to... Like, I have to wear my NYX glitter glue with the shimmers in this for it not to crease. Because these are very creamy. Like, the shimmers in here are super creamy. So I need to wear a glitter glue in order to make them stick all day. Otherwise, they just crease into oblivion. Adromeda Skies is the more smoky version, but it's also cool toned. And what's so nice about this is that as intense as it looks, it shears out beautifully. And I love especially this shimmer in this one. So uh, Enchantment is a bit more like spring vibes, a bit more pinky purple. This is a bit more smoky, a bit more neutral. Some great options in here. And these are what? $3.50? At the UK drugstore and you can find them online as well. Something that I think has already discontinued has already been discontinued because sometimes I'm a bit late to the party because sometimes I feel Essence and Catrice like they have their updates and then sometimes you know sometimes things just slip through with everything that I try but I really enjoyed this. The cool nude edition again I can still find it on Notino it's still available there but I think it's been discontinued pretty much anywhere else. But if you can still get your hands on this, oh, it was so, so stunning. I really enjoyed this palette. These reddish tones pulled more pink on me, which is why I like it. We get a full on taupe. Um, this silvery shimmer isn't like super stark and weird. Some really stunning things and I really enjoyed this. And again, it's very cheap, very affordable. And I had completely like overlook this line because I have tried similar-ish looking palettes from Essence in the past and I tried the entire line for a video or a review and I just didn't like it so I skipped these initially and now I wish I had tried the entire collection however I can no longer find all of them so it makes no sense so I have the one I like and if you can still find it I would highly recommend. Then we have Cloud9 from Colourpop. This is really, I really enjoy the packaging. Like it has this, like the clouds are a little holographic, which is pretty. And when they released this, I instantly knew I wanted to try it. And they now have a palette that looks just like this, but then with a nine pan with a pop of blue. And a part of me wants it, but a part of me is also like, Micah, you already own cloud nine. It's essentially the same thing. You don't need both. This has a holographic shade in, this shade here. Everything else is super light. It does go pretty deep, but also the deep shades I feel blend really well. So you can create a very nice sort of like soft, barely there kind of look. This palette reminds me a lot of what K-Beauty does. And everybody is always hating on K-Beauty, but then Colourpop does it and people all of a sudden like it. I never get that. Some stunning standard shimmers through the middle here. I really enjoy playing with this. Is this going to be like my favorite everyday neutral palette? I don't think it is because I do like a little bit more, uh, like a little less gray leaning perhaps. That's what I prefer. Um, but this was pretty and I did really enjoy using it. I'm glad I have it. Um, and yeah, let me know in a comment down below if you think I should also try the other palette that they do that is now the nine pen the elemental i think it's called let me know if you think i should try it i really don't need it in my life i know um and then a palette that i try because i like trying beauty bay from time to time they don't make my favorite formula but when they do the ultimate y2k palette of our lifetimes then i have maybe like this this is perhaps better um, this is just really pretty. It, it, ha it has quite a lot of grays. It has some taupey things. And then it just has some blues and some purples. I mean, it's nice. As I mentioned, I don't love the Beauty Bay formula. So that's why this is just not my favorite for that reason. Um, but I did enjoy playing with this. I can do some good looks with it. I have shades like this in other palettes. So I don't necessarily even need to keep this around. Um, but I like the color story as a whole, and I'm glad I tried some Beauty Bay again. They have come out with a big 36 pan and like a smaller 12 pan that are like neutral palettes that are cooler toned. And part of me really wants to 
like buy it and try it for the channel. So again, let me know. Do you want me to try those new Beauty Bay things? Even though I know I don't love the Beauty Bay formula. Like this is the trap I fall into. It's like, oh, it's for the channel. It's for the channel, so it doesn't really matter. And I think there are going to be some really beautiful shades in those palettes. Like I had a look at it, like I've put it on my wish list, just to be sure, but yeah. I know I don't need them, but part of me wants them. Then this palette can be a little bit more affordable, but it doesn't have to be. However, it is like a drugstore prize brand from Italy, which is Wicon. The palettes though that are this size are some of their more expensive products. The official retail price on this palette is I think 55 euros, which is not affordable at all. But when I bought it, it was like 30, or 40% off, so I paid a lot less money for it. And I got the impression that they had these kind of deals quite regularly, um, but they definitely have like Kiko price level products. They are a brand from Naples, the lady in the store told me, and I just, I had to try this. I had to try this. Like if it's a new to me brand and they're doing color stories that are quite unique, like you get this like pastel blue, a pastel peach, like a pastel like pistachio green, and then this taupe shimmer. That's the thing that sold me, and the shimmers in here are lovely. Do I wish there were some more like Cree shades in here? Because essentially you only get this one. Mm. But yeah, I think it is a beautiful palette. It has a lot of really great shades. So the Glam Eyes Coolest Shade from Wicon. I really enjoyed. Another palette I, en I enjoyed a lot is the Be Perfect Gravity palette. This is one I almost didn't pick up for a similar reason as the Beauty Bay palettes I just told you about. It was like, mm, I don't really need this in my life. I'm waiting until I can buy the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude and Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes. I don't need this. It's too similar to things that are already out there and that I already have in my collection. But then it was like, you know what? You've never tried Be Perfect before. So why not give it a whirl? Why not give it a whirl? Is this as cool toned as I thought it was going to be? Maybe not. It's cooler toned for sure, but the cool tones are definitely more so the grays. I feel we do get some warmth in this palette in the browns, which is why I feel it is more similar to something like Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude, or Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes with more shades and of course much more affordable because this is like, I think I paid 25 euros for this, including shipping from the Be Perfect website which is based in the UK. So this is an affordable palette and I don't want to knock affordable palettes just for the sake of them being affordable. This shade did come cracked so that's why the palette is a little bit messy, but it is my favorite shimmer in the entire palette. I could have done with one or two more shimmers, not gonna lie, but it, it has some really pretty shades in. Is this now my favorite old time cool tone color story? No, but it was good. It's, it's a good palette. I'm glad I now got to try the brand because I do like trying some new brands from time to time as well, you know? And something that was a complete ace in the hole for me was of course this guy, Glam Shop's Simna Mocha. Um, I believe it's cold coffee. Uh, that's what it translates to. This is a Polish based indie brand if you've never heard of them. This has already been discontinued. So I do apologize, but this I think came out in 2023 and then I tried it over the summertime and it was gone pretty quickly. However, their uh, later neutral, cool tone, neutral tone palette, the like nougat, I think it's called, uh, is still out there. So you can still purchase that. But Glam Shop eyeshadow palettes are always limited edition. Once they're gone, they're gone and you can't buy them anymore. And that's what happened to this one. But this is very pretty. It's very taupe leaning, which is why I like it because I love a taupe. Um, and it has enough depth. It has the contrast I need. It has the crease shades I need. It's light, but without it being too light for me. So it's almost perfect. And you get some really cool taupe leading shimmers in here, which I enjoy. And finally, something that completely surprised me is the Ghost Face palette from Glamlight or the Ghost Face Lives, I think. Um, this is so pretty. 
Um, I had not expected this because I have tried Glam Light in the past and I hadn't tried anything from them since this palette because I was like, I didn't love the formula. I was like, what, what is everybody going on about? Glam Light does not have my favorite formula and that's okay. You know, it's good to realize that. I had tried the cake palette before. Um, and yeah, then they released this and they did this whole line with all of these horror movie collabs and I wanted to try some and this is a great, like as far as a gray toned color story goes, this is go, this is really, really good. I do think though that if you have deeper skin, you may not like this. I feel this works on me because I have light skin that works really well with cool tones. I think that if you have a warmer undertone, if you have anything deeper than my skin tone, you may not like this because it goes pretty light it also in some of the mattes, but that's why I like it. And you get every shade of gray in here and on me, the color story shows up because I've heard people saying how on them it just becomes a muddy mess. On me, this purple and this purple show up. The bluey tones we get in here show up. The greeny tones we get in some of the other shades show up. So therefore, I really like it because I like it if grays aren't just blue, uh, as you will see in some of the other palettes that are coming up. Then I do like grays, even though I always keep saying I don't like it when palettes do grays, but this is a gray tone palette that was successful for me. And it may have made me decide to try some more Glam Light, as you'll see in my upcoming haul. Uh, I may have bought some more Glam Light because now that I know what I like from the brand, I thought I could try some more things. And then we have a bunch of small things in the high-end category because we're pretty much like halfway through, well, not even halfway because as I mentioned, there are fewer high-end things this time around than other times. However, something that I feel is definitely high-end, even though I think retail price-wise, this may be as much as the Kaleidos, I'm not sure. But in my brain, Glossier is definitely a high-end brand, especially for what you get inside. You know, you pay quite a lot of money for the product you get, I find. It's, it's the name you pay for as well. Uh, love the packaging. This is their Monochrome in Mist. And I bought Jute last year, uh, or a year before this. Um, and then I wanted to test it out, see if I like it. I liked it. And this ends up being like my favorite color story of the two. Uh, this is essentially cool toned purples. Um, if you've seen my Gloss Gods video that went live earlier this week, or maybe if that's going live after this video, I don't know what order I'm posting things in just yet, but you'll know that I have a Gloss Gods palette that has these like heathery purple shades in. That's why I love the palette. And I feel that this is a palette with just those heather kind of purple shades. The setup of this is super cool. You get a matte, a satin, and a metallic. And you can just do, you know, a very easy day look. You can glam it up with the metallic shade. I wish this was a four pen and we also got a shade to deepen things up. Then it would have been perfect, but these are really nice. I love the quality of these. Remember what I said about not liking gray tone palettes and yet I bought this. And I was on the fence about this at first. I was a bit like, mm, am I going to like this? Yes or no. And then I was at Sephora in Italy and I was like, I could just buy this as a bit of a souvenir for myself um, because they had it sitting on a shelf and I looked at it and I was able to swatch it in store. And I was like, you're coming home. And it's the Dior Backstage Silver Essentials. And now that I've tried this, I want to try another Dior palette from the Backstage line. The Smoky Essentials, which is another like cooler tone color story. And some, some of you have been asking me how I feel about that one. I don't know about that one because I've never tried it, but know that it's definitely on the wish list. And it's definitely something I'm going to be budgeting for in the next couple of months. Um, this has three grays, some purpley pinks and some more purpley pinks. So I feel it's more of a purple pink palette. And then the grays don't really have the... Like it's not emphasized as a gray palette, even though they're in the middle. Um, and the grays are really pretty. And I, I love how the purples and the grays work together in this. Love the formula, very soft. Like you can tell that this is not the kind of eyeshadow that most makeup beauty creators in the online sphere are going to love. This is not that super impactful in the eyeshadow quality that so many people love. 
This is, I just feel it's more like sophisticated. It's easier to work with, very blendable, and I prefer blendability over pigmentation. I've said this many times before, and this is one of the palettes that has confirmed that for me. And some other palettes that have confirmed that notion for me, but that swatch really terribly are the LH Cosmetics palettes that I've tried in the past year. So I bought this one first. This is the Daybreak. And I got this in and I was like, did I pay 45 euros for a nine pan just to not have it swatch? Because this in a finger swatch looks terrible. In a finger swatch, these do not perform. This is not Instagram worthy, TikTok worthy, YouTube worthy swatches when you try this. But with brushes, let me tell you, so, so pretty. Again, those heathery purple things. I have a thing for heathery purple. Okay, I just do. Um, but you also get something a bit more vibrant. You get that like turquoisey teal thing. Again, some gray tones, but also this taupiness. This is a duochrome, which it looks like a gray in the pan. I'm not sure if it shows up, but it's actually a blue brown shade. So you can rope it in with the blue. You can rope it in with the gray. You can rope it in with the brown. So many different looks you can do with this. Um, really pretty. Enjoyed it a lot more than I had expected upon first arrival. This is why I try to always go beyond first impressions when I review, because you never know how, how things might go. Um, but I liked it so much that when I tried it, I was like, okay, this has to go into the wish list. And Lico had a code for Black Friday. So I picked up the Aim Higher. And this is essentially, this is my favorite of the two because it has more taupe. This entire section is taupey browns. You have the grays and you have a yellow. It's not a yellow. This is a topper that has a really pretty shine. Um, that's more like a pinky, taupey brown sort of vibe. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't work like this on your lids. Again, works stunningly well with a brush. As far as a cool tone, neutral purple, a tone purple uh, palette goes from this brand, I would recommend this one over the daybreak. If you want those colorful things and you want it to be more like spring vibes, then perhaps go for the daybreak. This is a bit more smoky. And then we get some larger things. This guy came out, of course, and I had to try it because, hey, I've got a channel and I'm, I've sort of made it my mission to try as many cool tone things as I can. Th this, is the, this, this is the creator in me that goes like, that's why I need to try those Beauty Bay palettes. Even though I know I'm probably not going to love the formula, for the channel, I would want to try them. And that's definitely how I feel about this. Even though with Huda Beauty, I know I love the formula. So there's that. Um, the only thing that I didn't love in this palette is the weird cream shade that we get in here. Um, I use it as liner, but it's stamped because I have a hooded lid. So wasn't perfect for that. And a lot of people have been complaining that it's not that cool toned. Um, it's definitely more cool toned than other things that they have done, for sure. Um, but what you should know is that you, if you stay away from this corner here, or yeah, this corner right here, if you stay away from that, it's perfectly cool toned. Um, this is very sort of like plum heavy, and then you get your cooler tones down the bottom here. These four shades make it a bit more peach. Um, it's dark, it's dark, but yeah, it's the pretty grunge palette. So what did you expect? It is definitely a deeper color story. Um, I wish I got one lighter shimmer. That would be a inner corner highlight for me. If I had that, it would have been perfect. I get enough crease shades. I get enough deepening up shades. I get enough mid-tones. But shimmer wise, there isn't a whole lot of options in the lighter spectrum, I feel. And of course, we have to talk about this. Natasha Denona Xenon. So I'm not featuring I Need a Nude here because it's not cool toned. It's a neutral palette. This, however, is cool toned. And similar to the Ghost Face palette, I like this because the undertones do show up on me. So I do really like this. However, I have said that I wish there was a crease shade in here that was of the same depth as this, but this. So I wish either this shade or this shade would be like a taupe crease shade for me because I feel that these are both a little bit too light for it to work like that. So then everything looks gray because I only have a gray toned crease shade. That's the only gripe I have with this. The undertones show up on me. This looks blue. This looks purpley pink. Like it, it works. Um, so as far as like grays and like a cooler tone color story, I think this is really pretty. 
I do think color story wise, so I do think I like the glam light ghost face a little bit better in terms of like a gray tone color story because I feel we get more undertones in that and it has that deeper taupe uh, shade in, but I like this and I think at some point in time I'm probably going to marry this with the I need a nude and just take that taupe shade out of there for like and put them together um, or maybe I'm going to rearrange all of my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. I have six of the of these midi palettes and I've reorganized four and I love them so much better. With this I feel I'm missing things with the I need a nude I, I still feel it's too perfect to mess with. So that's why this hasn't happened yet and it's not happening anytime soon. So this isn't perfect but I kind of already knew that going into it so I didn't expect it to. But if you like your grays, you're gonna like it. My favorite shade in the palette is this shimmer down at the bottom. It's more of a topper though. We're almost there. This is definitely also one of the more expensive palettes because it's an indie brand. This is Gloss Goths Gel on Jupiter. As part of this eyeshadow palette week, I'm also ranking all of my Gloss Goths palettes. So I'll link it in the description box down below if I've already posted it, if not, it's gonna come within the next couple of days. So you can look forward to that. And the first gal on Jupiter is so, so pretty. The minute they announced it, I knew I had to try it. And I know that sometimes people think I'm just being very negative when I, whenever I film new makeup releases videos. But if there are months where there isn't much that I'm gonna want to buy, I'm not gonna be super positive. But in the months, which is usually the fall time and like winter time, when we get like the fall winter releases, if that's happening, then I feel a lot more in tune with what's going on in the makeup world and then I like it and that's what happened with this one. I snatched it up the day it launched. I set an alarm because it, it was released on uh, the Friday before Black Friday, like the F Black Friday, that's when it was released, that day. And I set an alarm so I wouldn't forget to pick this up. I'm terrible sometimes, but yeah, it's got these like taupey things. This taupe thing is like a murky yellow green undertone. Love that. It's got a holographic shade like the ColourPop, which I hadn't tried before I tried this palette really. So um, once you put it on the lids, it looks extra sparkly, which is really fun. Uh, it's got some like toppery things in here. It's got some really pretty actual metallics too. Um, it just has a really nice mix of gray tones and taupes and like browns. Um, this pulls a little bit more red, for instance, so it has some really nice things. Um, just be careful when you look this up online. I'm not sure if they managed to take down all the old pictures, but the manufacturer actually rearranged this palette accidentally, and now they're selling it as is, as mine looks. Um, but the pictures they initially took, the color story was arranged in a slightly different way. But yeah, I love this palette to pieces. I think it's a great one. If you're looking for a cool tone neutral palette, I think this may be one that I would recommend, recommend the most of everything that's out there at the minute. And then finally, 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 this big guy. Uh, it covers my entire face. <laughs> the Smoky Glam from Bella Beauté Bar. That's what we're talking about here. I picked this one up from Monolith because Bella Beauté Bar is a slightly more higher priced indie brand. And I have been eyeing them up for some time, but getting the palette with the shipping and then the customs, I was like, that's going to be expensive. So that's why I waited a little bit for this to come to Monolith. It was one of the first things I bought through there um, to test them out because people had been recommending uh, that website to me and I hadn't used it. And this is what the color story looks like. Can I fit it in? There we go. There is the Smoky Glam. It's a stunning palette. I just wish we had more shimmers in here. It's really pretty. Um, it's not just cool tone neutrals. You also get the pinks and the purples over it on this side. You get some peaches, some random warm tones it might seem, um, but it's, it's really only like this. Everything else is fairly cool tone. Maybe that shade down there. Um, there are some warmer tones, but it's not overly warm tone that it like, it becomes distracting. Sometimes it can be good for cool tone palettes to have some warms because it means more people can work with it. So I do appreciate it when they do that. It goes from very light to very dark. So you have your gradient. Um, it's just that, especially down here, all three of four of these shimmers kind of looked identical. So if it had like a lighter purple shimmer, 
I would have liked it a little bit better. Uh, maybe also like a lighter pink shimmer. Like this is super flaky and difficult to pick up. So I, I wished there were some more shimmers in the palette because it's now one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, it's 36 pans and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Only 12 shades are shimmers. So that means we get two thirds mattes, 12 shimmers. I'm like, make it 50-50. If we had six more shimmers, I would have liked this a lot better and it's just too big. I don't like big palettes like this, but I wanted to try the brand. So there's again that. <laughs> Will I go back to this? Yes, because I did enjoy the formula. I did really enjoy it. Especially the mattes are really good. So yeah, those are all of the eyeshadow palettes I wanted to chat to you about in this video. A cool tone roundup. These are all of the cool toned eyeshadow palettes that I've tried in recent months. It's been a ride because especially in like October, we got so many cool toned releases and I was here for it, but it takes me a little bit of time to, you know, get around to all of them. Um, because, you know, some of these things I've only tried last month. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just takes a while for me to then re review everything for you. So I'll make sure to link you to some of the reviews where I've talked about these before. So if you want to see swatches and looks that I've done with these, then I have all that information for you, especially in those videos. I will also make sure to link you to any of these palettes if they are still available. So if you want to purchase them, you can. Do note that if you click those links and you make the purchase, I can make a little bit of commission, but that goes to a good cost because I use any of the money I make with the channel to put it back into the channel. So it, it's going to go to more content for sure. So thank you so very much for joining me here today. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I will be back very soon because Eyeshadow Palette Week is still going strong and that means I will be back with a new video soon. So hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.